What's poppin' YouTube? What up though? All my niggas in the city. It's your boy Sleeves, man. We back. Another reaction vid. I know it's been a few days, but hey man. We back. We try to get a couple of them out for y'all today. I'm grinding on 2K, man. Trying to get y'all this game play. Had a late start. I think my nigga 78 right now. But I only been playing for a couple days. It's on the way. And once I touch that park in that wreck, it's over, man. I'm grinding to this 2K21 come up. But yeah, man. We got uh, the all-time worst NBA draft comparison. I already know it's going to be some horrible shit on here. I ain't watched that last one neither, but just from that comparison to Ray Allen and uh, Clay comparison to Marco, yeah, I can only imagine. So, shit, slide down there, like, comment, subscribe if you're new, tell a friend to tell a friend, because like I said, man, I ain't stopping. I was getting to it. We looked at the worst draft day comparisons in current memory, and we're going back and looking at some of the worst comparisons of all time. We can't go too far back though, because the draft day comparisons didn't really start it until the year 2000, but even starting just back then, you're going to see it's given us some pretty terrible ones. So for this video, we're going to have some of the older all-time ones mixed in with a couple of newer, more recent ones I found. And we're also going to try to not mention any that we already talked about in the other video, so if you don't see one you might have been expecting, watch the other video that's the first link in the description first, and you'll probably see it there. Also, make sure you stay tuned all the way until the end for the absolute worst draft day comparison of all time. And last thing I should mention is that for most of these, we're using the comparisons from NBADraft.net, and the first player we're looking at is Kwame Brown, who was known as the biggest bust in NBA history before Anthony Bennett, because he went first overall straight out of high school. Man, Kwame Brown, probably the worst. Him and Darko, bro. Darko, that's a little more personal. And y'all know why. But Kwame, that man right there, and Darko Milicic, I'm firing whoever you bring this to my office out of there. And got enough hype for that to happen because he was six foot eleven and two hundred and seventy five pounds as a senior. And his size and athleticism That's crazy. at such a young in age high school? was what impressed scouts so much. And combined that with his ability to hit mid range shots, convinced a lot of people that he was a first overall pick. As for his draft day comparison, though, well, NBA Draft.net had him compared to Kevin Garnett, which was still terrible, but not nearly hey, as bad as the comparison that was going around from some of the other scouts. Because many other scouts compared oh. Kwame to Carl. Look at that boy Swaggy. Young Swaggy on the court. Thanks to his NBA size frame. And not only that, but they said he young played like swaggy. a Shout out big spot. Young, man. That he could handle the ball very well swaggy. and even lead a fast break. So they were saying we had someone the size of Carl Malone that played like a guard. And this is without man. a doubt one of the worst He's big as hell. of all time. But trust me, it gets worse. And staying on the theme of NBA draft busts, there's Darko Milicic, Look, who had nearly every right scout pulled him. into thinking he was the next Darko Told Milicic, all, man. because he was drafted at a time when overseas players were the big thing, and even Beats, to this day, Darko, but get especially off. back then, hey. scouts wouldn't do too much research name, about overseas players, Darko. but if they were tall, name, foreign, and had a jump Darko, shot, then chances were they were compared Weak to Dirk at one point man. or another. He got a ring and mellow though. Let that sink. a better version of him that could post up and score with both hands. Look at that Stretched footwork. Mid range and three, and had incredible shot blocking ability. Never and not was only be did dirt. that lead to him going second overall, when he probably should have gone late in the second round, if anything. But Man, it, if it anything, being just just look at them three names after him. I'm even taking Chris Kamen, bro. Behind LeBron James and ahead of TJ Anthony, Chris Bosch, and Dwayne Wade, without a doubt making this one of the biggest draft day mistakes of all time. So it was clear that scouts didn't do their research on Darko because he only averaged six points in four Look at him getting that work in his hey. 10 year career. Hey. Looking at a more recent comparison though, in 2015, Emmanuel Moutier's NBA comparison, according to NBA Draft.net, was John. And Wall, they hyped me up because I thought Moutier was going to be nice. Size, 
speed, agility, and athleticism to go with the vision and mentality of a point guard. And Scout said that he was a true pass-first kind of point guard that would be a great finisher at the rim. But basically, all of the strengths in his report were based on his athleticism and all of his weaknesses Battery were based on how he actually top. played That's the game. Indeed. Which makes it clear that he probably should have never been compared to John Wall in the first place. And seeing how he's played since being we in the league, makes it clear though. that he really shouldn't have. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he's a bad player. Hey. He's a great athlete and makes for a solid backup point guard for any. Bro, he's not but John Wall. should have found a better comparison for him than to one of the best overall point guards in the league. There you go. Then Talk we have Giannis, it. and NBA Draft.net had his draft day comparison as Nicholas Batum. All what? right, we'll be fair with this one. At the time that Giannis was going into the draft, it was 2013. And when the comparison took place, he was skinny as hell. Nick Batum was a player for the playoff Blazers team, so we'll give him that. They did my nigga dang dirty. Him, LA, all of them. Anywhere near where he's at today. Skating on that ball. Back then, you could see how they would have made this comparison. But this is an all time worst draft day comparison still. He even looks like Nick Batum. I give y'all that. Based on where players are currently at and how good they currently look. It's their job to get insight on a player, who they are, and make the most accurate prediction of the player that they will become. Because the whole point of drafting a player is for their future. And seeing how Giannis has turned out, they did a pretty terrible job. Don't get me you wrong, think? not many people saw this coming from Giannis, but given that it's scouts shots to do so, we're allowed to knock him for it. One that's not up for debate is Eddie Curry, Curry. in 2001 was compared to Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq, a unanimous top 10 player of all time, the most dominant force in NBA history, was Man, used to describe Eddie Curry. And in his draft report, one line even says he has more strength Why you gotta go great? than Shaq. Why they have to go like all time great off the scouting report? Like, come on, man. You couldn't do nobody who was playing or nothing. You just Shaq. Come on, man. Same age. And does not have the Achilles free throw curse that himself and Will Chamberlain had. And he was drafted fourth no, overall. No, he got the Achilles talent curse. Brown, which he ain't just to make this look like a whack draft. Honestly, though, Eddie got those comparisons almost solely for his wide frame and being able to still play while being seven foot tall and 300 pounds. He moved while niggas out the way. He was always hurt. But I, mean, I kind of fucked with Eddie Curry when he played for the Knicks. Shaq, he had a solid 11-year career averaging 12 and 5. So even though he struggled with his weight, he wasn't a terrible player. But honestly, the Shaq comparisons were Oh, it looked like he finna get boo. Get comparisons out of here. Bees! I mean, Bees in the trap. Michael Beasley that was his problem. In high school, averaging 28 and 16 as a senior, Tripping. then averaged 26 and 12 for his winter at Kansas State, on 53% from the field and 38% from three, in what was one of the better college seasons of all time. And the mellow comparisons were there. He could shoot mid-range, blow that gas. Three, That's the problem. Post up, and on top of that was a great all-around athlete. Hey. So much so that he was in discussions to go first overall. And we ain't the problem with. But ultimately went second to the Miami Heat. He couldn't focus. And I mean, on top on the board, of the scouts that had it problem. right. He really did have what it took to be a superstar level player. But it was everything off the court that really derailed his NBA career. And it Talk was what scouts it. didn't manage to see back then that would be the biggest factor Ugh. in ruining his career. Man, but honestly, these. this one's not a terrible comparison. But in the long that term, he in. didn't turn out to be the player he was expected. Man, then man. there's Alexi Chavez, And this is a guy you may or may not I remember, remember from his brief run on the Timberwolves in 2012 and 13. I mean, if you don't remember him, it's because there was nothing memorable about him. Except for the fact that before joining the NBA, he was claimed to be a 6'7 natural point guard whose NBA comparison was Penny Hart. This is what I'm talking about, bro. Penny. Penny. With the phone. Scout said that in Russia he was an explosive scorer and playmaker like Penny Hardaway and could play on both ends. But he rarely ever played point guard while in the league and only lasted three seasons overall, averaging seven points, two assists, and started 25 total games in his career before going back overseas. No. I mean, comparing him to Penny Hardaway for what just seemed to have been his size was a stretch. Pretty unnecessary looking back. And speaking of unnecessary, here we have Adam Morrison. Now, knowing that Man. Adam Morrison would get drafted third overall, then turn into one of the biggest busts we've ever seen. I think seen. he battled with JJ. Back and remembering that his draft day comparison with Larry Bird is one of the most incredible scouting errors ever. But it's also a reminder that not everyone translates to the NBA. He was nice, though. Because while scouts definitely had 
that part well, here you go with the all-time great so Larry Parker man. Person was really believable. He was averaging 28 a game as a senior on 43% from three. And while he wasn't athletic, he knew how to maneuver and score with ease. But once Michael Jordan selected him on the Bobcats, it was all downhill from there. Mm. He was the third overall pick and only played Damn, two MJ. seasons on the Bobcats and two seasons on the Lakers, winning two championships, but being a complete meme for his participation or lack thereof on those teams. A more current terrible drafting. They ain't even talk about Dark over and that's how you know this stuff. Because resembled a cross between Kyle Lowry and Kimba Walker, all while being reminiscent of Damian Lillard and having a better grip on passing in the pick and roll than. The Trey was nice as hell. I, mean, I, I feel like he should have stayed at all another year. Fans have wanted to compare him to Allen Iverson because you see how like I'm rocking. I don't even fuck with Mitchell. Ago, but their so games aren't really that simple. They both have a good crossover and a street ball kind of feel, but the comparison stopped mm. there because of how much more athletic Ed Man, was. I think he's from Ohio. And I have Ohio. no idea where the Damian Lillard comparison comes Michigan. in because he's also a That's much better athlete. That's why he drives to the basket shit. a lot more often, and while well, they do both have solid mid-range games, that's also not enough for a comparison. As for the Kyle Lowry and Kemba Walker comparison, I mean, I can see his play style matching with both Kemba and Kyle's, but he plays nowhere near the level that they do. Then for Dwayne Wade, there's no bad comparison here, but what uh -huh. Scouts said about Work him out. before the draft hey. was at least worth mentioning during this the This is how y'all niggas should look versus NBA niggas. He should be taken 11th or 12th overall in 2003, and that he should be converted to a hey. point guard when joining the NBA, because at 6'3", he was way too short for a shooting guard, and on top of that, they even thought he was much shorter than the 6'3", that Marquette listed him. So they said that he could one day be a starter on the team and that his ceiling was Gilbert not I mean at this point what are scouts even That's even more like, amazing. What's the point of them if it's just a 50-50 on if they get things right or not? And a perfect example of that is for the worst comparison of the video and the worst NBA draft day comparison of all time with Deshaun Stevenson who takes this one for being compared to Michael Jordan. And some of you won't even know who Deshaun is which Soldier Boy that's who he is. He needs to keep more of a reason for this to be an outrageous claim. I was I mean, about to turn this shit off. I'm just let Doyle finish. I ain't even got nothing to say. He was a role player for most of his career and obviously never came close to living up to the hype. NBA Draft.net even tried to defend their claim in 2015 after their scouting mm. report went viral by saying, Lesson learned. Never compare anyone to Michael Jordan. This was in the they gonna try to backtrack. That's how bad that shit was. Go watch bro. Stevenson you, in high you said school. that. He was incredible. One of the most spectacular 17-year-old wings you could ever see. But not going to college had a catastrophic effect on him. And I mean, so it's now y'all gonna blame it on college, not going to college. Out of high school after his grades okay. came into question. But hold on there. So they didn't compare a college kid to MJ. They compared a 17-year-old fresh so out of I'm high saying, school. That's what I'm saying, bro. Y'all going all-time greats. Nigga, you went the fucking goat. They blamed it on him skipping college. So Come that's on. a big L for them. But luckily, we have a very poorly recorded version of Deshaun Stevenson's aforementioned high school mixtape to review. And honestly, as you can see, there's some impressive athleticism here. It's not I MJ. Mean, really nothing too crazy. So this will probably forever be the saying. worst draft day comparison. And honestly, it's not Deshaun's fault because he boy. didn't compare himself to MJ. But he had to deal with the backlash and pressure from it as a 17-year-old. Plus, he just so happened to get drafted 23rd overall in 2000, which was odd. But like I said, that was the worst and the last mm. one we had for today. With basketball out of people's minds during everything, so only MJ down, compared. So only MJ comparison he got was he got drafted 23, and that was his number. I mean, fuck out of here. But yeah, man, end of that one. Shit, end of the wood. I said, like, comment. Let me know if y'all fucking with it. These reactions are easy. I ain't been on here in a few days, so I'm going to drop a couple of them. Got y'all, man. Till next time, though, gang.